they get a SNES adapter for their NES. Oh, Big Mitch right there. Nice. Okay, there we go. But this isn't Mario 3. What is this? What's up, guys? Today we have a very interesting video ahead of us. Um, there's been a lot of questions and a lot of talk. Um, and honestly, just through my gaming experience, I have noticed a lot of people complaining about the NES controller. Um, so some of the questions that I, that I uh, get asked a lot is like, how can you play on the NES controller for so long? Not just so long in how many years I've been playing, but also how can you keep up six hours a day and use your NES controller and not have any issues with it? So I want to go through with you guys about why you're having hand pains, why people are struggling so much with the NES controller. I mean, we have people that struggle with this thing so much that they switch to Super Nintendo controller. There's a lot of people who get the SNES adapter and use it on their NES so they don't have to, they don't have to use this, but you don't have to be that drastic. The NES controller is not that bad. There's a lot of different techniques and a lot of different methods that people don't know about when using this controller so it's comfortable and so it doesn't hurt. Now, does it hurt my hands? Of course it does. I play six hours, seven hours, sometimes four hours, but I've been also doing it for a long time, speedrunning all the time. I actually don't like the SNES controller as much as I like the NES controller, so there's got to be some strategies, there's got to be some things here. Let's just go ahead and jump right in and I can show you guys how I use it, how you can use it, and all the different ways that make it comfortable because I guarantee if it's hurting you too much, you're using it wrong. First, I'm just going to start off with the most basic, easiest way that anyone can play it, and that is flat claw grip. Uh, I don't know if anyone actually uses their first finger with flat claw, fat claw. So you hold B with this, jump with A. Not comfortable for me, not a huge fan, don't really like it. If you ever have to, right? You can hear Mario, I still have Mario 3 on, but right, if I ever have to switch, the only problem is you're putting a lot of pressure on your fingers. You see how your fingers are under? Like this, you're putting a lot of pressure. One of the biggest things that people have problem with are the corners. The corners, they're all super sharp. There are ways of avoiding the corners so that they don't hurt. They are very sharp. If you like push down on your finger while holding the corner, it's gonna hurt. And you have the straight lines that just get irritating. And then you got the cord right in the top, right? You're trying to hold the controller. The cord's always in your way and you're always trying to fix it, right? Super annoying. Okay, so anytime anyone ever asks me, here's the first extremely comfortable way where you can hold the controller. You take your two fingers from the bottom and you put it on the right and you take your two fingers, your two middle fingers on the other side, you put them at the bottom and then you take your top fingers and your pinkies on the bottom like this, right? You hold the controller just like this and you can see it perfectly. I got fingers lined up on the top, pinkies lined up at the bottom and these two fingers. And now I can actually hold kind of like in a, you're cradling it, right? So now the corners aren't really affecting me because my fingers are lined up on the top and lined up on the bottom and I can actually just play like this. This is a per perfect way. This is one of the best ways to hold the controller where it's not going to hurt your fingers. I like to call it the cradle grip, I guess. I'll make that up right now. Cradle grip. You guys want a cradle grip? Go ahead. There is another way. Instead of having your fingers and hands like this, you can slide all of your fingers kind of on the edge like that. Okay? Remove your pinkies. Have your first fingers. You hold it like this and you're good to go. You have your pinkies loose, kind of up like this so they're not touching any of the corners. And then you're kind of lightly holding it with your fingertips. I actually use this strategy or this method um, depending on what I'm actually doing in the game. It, it, it all depends on what I'm doing. Those are strategies of ways to avoid the corners. Let's talk about why your thumbs are hurting, okay? My thumbs hurt after four hours of playing Mario 3 because I'm going really hard at it, makes sense. But for those of you who want to play an adventure game, like let's say Final Fantasy, you want to play that game for 10 hours straight, that's perfectly fine. That's that's what gamers do, right? And you don't want your thumbs to hurt. The D-pad's pretty basic. People either use more of, I guess this would be the base or the ball, I'm not quite sure, but they use more of this part of their thumb, which covers more surface area. I think that's an okay method, but you have you run the risk of hitting more up inputs and down inputs accidentally you have to remember i come from the speed running background so it's very important that when i'm holding right i'm only holding right and when i shift from right to left or from right to up or down that i'm only hitting those buttons i've developed calluses so the other method doesn't hurt as much but i use actually the tip right i use yeah, the tip i use the tip of my thumb and um, the, the thing that hurts the most when I use the tip is like the nail area. Like if, you, if you've ever put a lot of pressure on your nail 
and then push down on something, it hurts really badly, right? Honestly, if you're looking for no pain, I'd recommend using the flat part of your thumb. You're not gonna get the most precise inputs, but you're not gonna experience any pain. So you got your, you got your cradle grip, and then you got your flat thumb. No pain, man, you can last forever with this. All right, now the buttons, the buttons are different. The buttons, you can use the two methods that I explained before. You could use flat, where your thumb is almost over the start button. I've seen, you guys have seen people do this a lot, I'm sure, right? They're holding it like this. But you want to use the flat part and kind of hover more like this, where you can still see a little bit of the B button. That way, you can you can be more dominant over the A button, like this, no pain. not None at all, because you're just using this little part right here. And then when you do press B, you just lower your thumb. Kind of like a whoop, back and forth. This strategy is actually used a lot in Kaizo games where you want to keep holding jump, but you want to let go of B, right? So you do, like that hurts. That takes a lot of strength to do that a lot in an NES controller. A nice comfortable way to hold the buttons, boom, right here. Using a non-cradle grip or a non-painful grip, doing something like this is actually going to hurt you more because this finger, right here, this one, is right on the corner, right there. It's right on the corner, right down there. So you want a cradle grip, then go. Cradle grip is by far the best. Flat thumbs, guys. Cradle grip, flat thumbs. And this is for just passive gameplay. This is for people wanting to play Mario 3, maybe for the first time. Maybe they want to revisit childhood memories. Maybe they want to play other NES games. I don't want people giving up because the controller, I mean, if you compare the NES controller to an Xbox controller, even a PlayStation controller, even the Switch Pro controller, which this has a better D-pad than that thing. It's just, um, it's so easy to get rid of this thing the, the moment it starts to hurt, which is actually after about five seconds, right? That's the problem. You hold it, you're playing, and you're like, what the heck? Like, you can even see right here, see that line right there? That, that red line, that's from the corner. That's from the corner. That's pretty much it. That's the basics of like using the NES controller. A lot of people just pick it up and then they're like, I don't like this, I'll, I'll move on. It doesn't matter how you look using the controller. What matters is that you can play your favorite games for more than 10 years without having hand pains. If you watch me do speedruns, I don't necessarily use the exact same methods that I just explained to you because because of the speedrunning and because of how long I've actually been using the controller, I've created a lot of calluses all over my fingers. So I actually hold the controller like this. This is exactly how I hold the controller when I play, okay? So I, I continue with my fingers. My fingers aren't flat like how I suggested you guys did. My fingers are more, I'm kind of on the corners a little bit, as you can see, kind of on the corners a little bit, but I don't, I don't press hard on this. So th there's no problem there, right? How I do, however, press very hard on the D-pad, but I use the tip of my thumb. So after, after a while, I get calluses, so it doesn't hurt that much. After about five or six hours, it starts to hurt. But this is normally how hard I press, and then I create, right? See, the callus creates a little indent of the D-pad, right? I don't want you guys to have that. There's no reason for it. It's just, it's just how I'm used to it. Mashing is very important. A lot of people like to do tense up the arm. Very unhealthy, but it works. It gets the job done. There's other ways you can do it. You can do the cradle grip and actually move this into into your thumb. So, you see how that works? These fingers are just holding the side here, not doing anything. This thumb is just sitting there. It's just hovering, I'm not even moving it. All I'm moving is this hand, which is comfortable cradle grip. Look at that, very comfortable, into the thumb. See how the thumb is just sitting there? That's a very nice way. If there's anyone out there who's ever played instruments, like a guitar or anything like that, there's another method of mashing that's very comfortable. You can cradle grip like that. Cradle grip, just like I taught you. Dude, the cradle grip is so good. Okay, the cradle grip, and then hover your thumb over the button like this, right? Easy peasy, I'm holding it, and then, and then finger tap. When you tense up your arm like this, you're gonna you're gonna blow something. Something's gonna pop in there. I don't, I don't recommend that, right? This is hard to execute in a game, but some games it's not. Some games it's easy. You can even do like three things. Imagine you got really good and did one, two, three, four. A good example is I taught Mexican Runner 
the Mexican runner, that's right. I taught him that strategy at a GDQ one time, and he actually used it in one of his runs before. Another method is being able to successfully do a double shot. Um, and what you do is there is whenever you press B, you want to move your thumb over and do a quick double B. And then, of course, the last thing that I use in my speedruns is uh, the D-pad taps for the subpixel manipulations. What I do is I flip the controller over and then boom, 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 so that I hit the right move. But that's way too advanced. If you're having any other hand pains or if you're having any problems or any questions, ask me in the comments below. I'm so interested in this controller. I almost use it like an instrument. There's so many different things that you can do with this thing that I would hope all of you guys who are, who are having problems to engage and we can figure out more solutions so that people don't have these problems. This is just an introduction of like things that I do and, and ways that you can hold the controller and actually make it so much better. This is a very good controller. It's just we all subconsciously just grab it the wrong way and use it and then they're like, ow, I don't want to do this anymore. So if not for me, do it for the power bar down there, okay? All right, if not for me, so. Yeah, thank you guys for watching and don't hold the, don't do this, please.